this second uh, business forum takes place in a tough economic climate, both in Europe and in South Africa. And I can appreciate that the team of the EU South Africa Summit of this uh, end of this uh, business forum deals with the relationship between growth, investment and employment. In the European Union, we are reducing budget deficits to reasonable levels, but we also have a growth strategy. Trade policy is part of that. It is based on the calculation that trade will strengthen growth and therefore employment. It is essential that business plays its full part in this. We can deliver this policy, but nothing will happen if business does not play ball. This is why events such as uh, this business forum are essential. They are an occasion where politics and business meet. They also provide an opportunity for business to meet and share experience. The second uh, EU South Africa business forum is particularly important. The European Union remains a strong investment destination which uh, still receives the highest share of FDI in the world year on year. South African companies such as uh, Steinhoff in the furniture retailing sector and Aspen in the pharmaceutical sector have been active on our market. Investing in South Africa is not a quick fly-by-night operation but requires long-term sustainable partnerships. This business forum can bring EU and South African companies together to reinforce this approach. It is maybe not fashionable to say so, but in my opinion the TDCA, the Trade Development and Cooperation Agreement, has been a success. Trade between the EU and South Africa has increased steadily since 2000 from 26 billion to 46 billion today. But what is maybe more important is that trade has been diverse and has continued to diversify further as new business opportunities were created. We both uh, export goods with added value to each other. And one of the reasons for this is that the TDCA has liberalized intermediate goods. And this has been to our mutual benefit. You are aware that we are negotiating a region-wide economic partnership agreement. And South Africa has openly said that it wishes to benefit from these negotiations by increasing market access to the EU. Under the TDCA, we liberalized many more lines than South Africa. South Africa has also had a steady surplus in trade in agricultural goods. And yet, we have again agreed to uh, asymmetric market opening in the current IPA negotiations. But I will not be able to accept an agreement without any meaningful market access for European operators. I will not go to uh, EU member states that are badly hit by the economic crisis and that uh, would have to face new South African competition without something in return. So I'm calling on South African business to take this to heart. It is also in your interest because once we solve the issue of agricultural market access, I think we can get to an agreement on the IPA. And that IPA will be the most flexible agreement that the EU has negotiated with any FTA partner. EU countries are the source of 88% of foreign direct investment stock in South Africa. As I said, we are a reliable investment partner and we contribute to economic growth and to finding jobs for South Africans. But this should not be taken for granted. Investors need predictability and reasonable opportunities for making profits. Investors can decide not to invest or they can decide to pull out. And this is why I'm concerned with recent actions and considerations. South Africa is unilaterally revoking another bilateral investment treaty with European partners, most recently with Spain. There has been little consultation with us and there is no predictable framework for these revocations. Also, export restrictions are on the rise. I have seen a proposal on restricting scrap metal and I have seen that a draft bill on minerals may cater for export duties on raw materials. South African business is also asking for safeguards against European imports. Investors are watching developments very carefully. It only takes a critical mass of measures before investors decide to defer investments in South Africa. And this will have an impact on jobs, growth 
and competitiveness. We should cherish our investments, not limit them. We should encourage exports, not restrict them. And I hope you will consider this in your deliberations. Thank you very much.